What's going on? How we doing? Look at what I've got. I've got this box full of upstart epoxy. I want to open it up and show you what's in it. First and foremost, we have the part A of the epoxy resin. We have the part B of the epoxy resin. Now upstart epoxy for this tabletop resin that we're going to pour is a one to one ratio. You take one part of part A by volume with one part of part B by volume. You mix them thoroughly and then you do your pour. Inside the box as well, we've got a plastic scraper that'll allow you to help the epoxy um, spread along the tabletop to make sure you get even coverage all the way through. You have a foam brush. This foam brush will allow you to take it down the edges of the tabletop to make sure the drips don't show up and to even out those drips along the side so it looks really, really great on the side of your table. Also inside the box, we've got two stir sticks um, that'll help you just mix the epoxy, get it resin ready to pour over um, the tabletop. We also have uh, our user guide which gives you suggestions on how to mix the product, how to pour the product, um, helpful hints, directions on how to go about the process. If you happen to not be happy for any reason or you need to contact us for any reason with questions, um, with suggestions, um, anything really, go ahead, email us, message us. Here's a little card that'll help you do that. And then last, but certainly not least, is we have this card included in the box. We will give you this card um, that is valid for a free um, pigment or mica powder that'll allow you to take it and mix it inside the epoxy to get some of those really intense colors that you've seen with epoxy resins and epoxy pores. To do that, um, you can text us at our phone number 205-206-5508 or type in this link, send us that feedback or scan this QR code to get access to that. So what we're gonna do, since we've got this all unboxed, we're gonna take the epoxy, we're gonna mix it up, we're gonna get it on this tabletop and let you see that process. It's gonna look amazing. Some of the other things we need to do this successfully is we need some tubs to mix in, some mixing buckets. Now I grabbed these from the local hardware store here um, across the way. So I've got different sizes here, right? I've got some small ones. They've got some measurements on the side to help me measure the one-to-one -one ratio. I've got some bigger ones just in case we need some more. I'm not exactly sure right now how much epoxy we're gonna need. We're gonna do that measurement in just a second. Um, but we definitely need some buckets, clean buckets. I like to, to wipe them out, before I start mixing the epoxy because inevitably there's a piece of dust or a piece of film that gets stuck in it like that that we don't want on the final finish of the table. Um, also, make sure you're wearing rubber gloves to protect your hands. Make sure you're wearing glasses uh, so that you don't get the epoxy in your eyes. Just overall safety measures because it is a chemical and we just wanna be careful and safe as you go through the process. All right, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna measure the tabletop and calculate the amount of epoxy resin that we're gonna need to use to coat the whole thing. We're gonna coat the whole thing in two different steps. First, we're gonna do what's called a seal coat to seal the wood surface so the air pockets that are inside the wood itself don't come out and cause bubbles on top of the eventual final epoxy pour. So we're gonna do a seal coat first. We're gonna wait um, about four hours in between coats and then we're gonna come back again with a flood coat. But right now I'm gonna turn around and show you how to do those measurements to make sure you get the correct amount of epoxy set up for both part A and part B. To do this, first we need to get the length and the width of this rectangular surface. So we need to get the area of it and then we need to multiply that, those two numbers and then one more number, we need the depth of the pour that we're gonna do. We're gonna do the seal coat, we're gonna measure as a 1 16th of an inch pour and then for the flood coat, the final coat, we're gonna measure that as one eighth of an inch, okay? So this is what we're gonna do. We're just gonna measure the length of the surface. Now that's gonna be 92 inches and a quarter. So 92 and a quarter inches, okay? We're gonna multiply that by the width of the surface. So we're at 22 inches. I'm gonna go over to the other side just to make sure I get the correct measurement on both ends. 22 inches. So we've got our 92 and a quarter and we've got 22. That's gonna give us our area of the surface. Now we need the depth of the surface for the pour because we're talking about volume instead of just surface area here. So when we said we're gonna multiply that by 1 16th and then we're gonna turn around and multiply that. We're gonna do a second round of those calculations to get the volume of the flood coat. So, and that is going to be a depth of 1 8th of an inch. Again, we measured the surface to be 92 and a quarter by 22 inches. For our seal coat, 
we want that to be 1 16th of an inch deep, okay? So that's gonna be the first round that we're gonna use. Our second round, which will be our flood coat, which is gonna be 1 8th of an inch deep by 92 and a quarter by 22. So when we multiply that out, we're going to get the volume amount that we need to use for the epoxy, and that's gonna be in inches cubed, because we measured in inches cubed, then we're gonna use just online, we're gonna go online, we're gonna do a quick conversion using a, a web browser and get it into ounces so that we can mix it in the buckets that we have. So essentially what I'm gonna do here is, for the seal coat, I'm gonna take 129, I rounded that up to the nearest cubic inch, so I'm gonna type that in, just gonna Google it here, so 129 um, cubic, cubic inches to ounces, and then Google's gonna do me a favor and tell me that it needs to be 71.481 US fluid ounces for the whole pour, right, for the seal coat. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna round that up to 72 fluid ounces because we are gonna lose some of the epoxy over the sides. So we just kinda wanna always round up to make sure we have enough. We'd rather err on the side of having a little bit too much. So for the seal coat, we got um, 72 ounces of a product, which would mean the flood coat would be 144 ounces for the product. Um, but remember, we have a one-to-one -one ratio of by volume of the epoxy. So for the seal coat, we want 72 total ounces for the whole seal coat. So we've got to divide that by two to get that one-to-one -one ratio. So we're just gonna divide that by two. For the seal coat, that gives us 36 ounces of part A and 36 ounces of part B, okay? And then, essentially, for the flood coat, we're doubling the volume that we're gonna use, so we can just double those values, uh, or we can take 144, divide it by two, and then we'll get the same number, but we could double these. So for the flood coat, we need 72 ounces of part A, and we need 72 ounces of part B. And I like to write it down just to make sure as I go about mixing them, I don't make any mistakes. I don't have to think about it again. Writing it down really helps me prevent some of the issues that might happen just because I mix too much or too little epoxy before we go to make the pour. So one of the other questions we get asked through this whole process is not how much epoxy do I need for this in terms of ounces, but how much is that in terms of gallons, right? So I prefer to go about and get the amount of ounces I need for the project because I know my buckets that I typically use have measurements in terms of ounces. So that works for my buckets, but that doesn't necessarily work for how much epoxy I need to buy to actually do the project, because oftentimes we talk about the amount of epoxy in terms of gallons. So we need to do one more conversion before we figure out how much epoxy we need to buy when you go about how much you need to get in that box. So right now, for the flood coat, I've got 144 total ounces for the flood coat. For the seal coat, I've got 72 ounces, which will give us 216. When we calculate how many total ounces we need for the whole project, including the seal coat and the flood coat, we need 216 US ounces. And then we turn around and we need to convert that in gallons to see how much epoxy we need to buy. So I'll use um, that online calculator again. I put 216 imperial fluid ounces and I want that in US liquid gallons. So that turns out to be 1.62 gallons. And that can help you to decide how much you need to purchase. Do you need to purchase two one gallon kits? Do you need to purchase a gallon kit and a half gallon kit for the project? Remember, it's probably a little bit safer to always increase the amount you need to buy just to make sure you have enough for the full project when you finish kind of making the table itself. And one thing to remember, before you start, grab your rubber gloves, grab your glasses, make sure you put those on instead of leaving them on top of your hat. One other thing I like to do is I like to mark the containers, A and B, um, especially if I need to measure it twice in one of the containers before I put it in the big one. So to start, I prefer to put A and B into totally separate containers and then put them together in a third container and get that final mix. Because the reality is, is some of the volume is gonna stay on the sides of these containers. So if I just take one and pour A into B here, we're gonna get some residual uh, material on the side of this container. And that means the volume ratio will actually be off at the end of the day. So I pour them in here first, get my first measurement, pour them in the final container, give that a mix. If I need to do another round to get the appropriate volume, and today I do because these only go up to 32 ounces, and we talked about 
I need 36 ounces for this project. So that's another reason why I like to label these containers A and B. So right here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab part A and measure that up to 32 ounces. We're just gonna give it a pour, fill up that container. Remember to wipe out the container to make, just in case there's some little particles in there. So we're gonna go and we're gonna pour this out. We're gonna go all the way up to that 32 ounce line. Be careful you don't go over because the volume one to one ratio is really important to get the correct pour. That right there at the 32. I'm going to set that aside and go ahead and get part B into the part B container up to 32 ounces. A little bit too much there. Nope, it actually is the right amount. So, again, so we've got 32 ounces in one, 32 ounces in the other. That's going to be 64 ounces, which is short of what I needed for that first seal coat. Please be aware of that. So, but now when I go to mix this first round, I'm going to take these plastic sticks that come in the container. So currently, after you do the pour, there will be some bubbles in the mixture as you pour it out. That's okay, because those are going to release through the curing process. As the epoxy heats, those bubbles are going to be able to kind of escape and come out and float to the surface. We're going to help those along with the heat gun after we, when we do the flood coat pour at the end, but it's totally normal right now to have a little bit of those bubbles in there just naturally. So we're going to turn around. We're going to pour part A in our final container first. And then when we go to pour part B, we're gonna start mixing as it's going in. So we start to uh, mix that together clearly, mix it really well. It's incredibly important that you get a very, very good mix on this. Six to seven minutes is good. It's also important when you're doing just a tabletop epoxy like this to mix it by hand, even though it can be a little bit tedious. Mixing it by hand will prevent more bubbles from accumulating in the product. If you take a mechanical mixer to stir part A and part B, you might accidentally whip the epoxy, which brings a lot of bubbles into it. Little tiny micro bubbles that are really, really tough to escape if you start whipping it like it's, like it's a whipped cream. So again, there's part A. We're gonna turn around, follow that by part B. And as I'm pouring in part B, I'm gonna mix it to make sure that we mix it in there real well. So here we go. And I'm just gonna keep mixing it. We're trying not to whip it, we're just trying to mix it thoroughly um, so that we accumulate. You'll notice that it becomes a little bit cloudy when you put part A and part B together. That is perfectly, perfectly normal. As you're mixing it, it should become clear if you have the appropriate one-to-one -one ratio. So we wanna scrape some of the sides, you wanna scrape the bottom of the bucket to make sure you get it 100% combined because you don't want it to be separate. The combining of the one-to-one -one ratio really does allow it to begin its chemical reaction process to harden. If you don't mix it really, really well, if you just kinda, oh, I'm done, I'm done mixing, you might not get a hard surface at the end. You might get a cloudy surface, but if it's totally, totally integrated, if part A and part B are completely integrated through the process, you're gonna have a crystal clear pour at the end of the day. As you've worked to mix it, you'll notice that the kind of the color and the look, there's no more streaks of the two different um, resins. The viscosity is even and consistent amongst it. We spend a lot of time scraping the bottom, scraping the sides of the container to make sure we get all of that um, integrated appropriately. All right, so what we have here, remember we're doing the seal coat here, is to seal all of the air pockets in the table surface, in this porous surface, to make sure that those air bubbles don't come up into the epoxy. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna kinda pour this on the top, and we're gonna make sure, we're gonna pour it all, all the way around the top, and we're gonna make sure to kinda spread it all, take it down the sides, wipe those sides to make sure we don't have any drips. So here we go. So we've got that poured. We're gonna use this rubber scraper to help spread the seal coat around the tabletop. Look at that. Remember, it's self-leveling, okay? So we're not gonna really worry too much about it being level as we go about. I mean, obviously we don't want giant mounds, but again, scrape it around the sides, work it to the edges, work it to the edges, let it drip off the side. That's why we have that tarp on it and the tarp on the floor. You see I have this one side of the table hanging off a little bit. Um, look at that. So awesome. And you don't want to over level the product or over scrape the product because, you know, let it do its thing. Just kind of spread it around, get it to cover the whole surface, let the self leveling do what it does to get a really, really great finish. And we're not going to scrape it totally Tough there. 
So we're gonna use this V-notch trowel to help level it as well. Put it on a 45 degree angle, back and forth. Making sure we cover all the little parts. Okay. And then we're gonna take the brush and work on these drips. A little bit more there on the corner. Make sure we get some coverage with this seal coat. A little walking around in circles. Kind of fun. And then, so after I get this edges, I'm going to go underneath the tabletop to get the drips that actually are coming down from those sides. This foam brush really does help do that. It's nice to not have to worry about also getting one more component. Nice that it's included. Lots of walking around in circles just to ensure we get a really, really nice smooth edge. So that's one of those things you really, really, you just don't want these drips to show up on the edge. That'd be really, really sad. One of the components that helps prevent that as well is the fact that this whole surface of the table is incredibly level. Right? Because the surface of the table is level with the ground, right? those drips aren't going to just pool on one side. Right? This table is level, it's going to self-level, we're not going to just have like a little waterfall on one edge or, or the other. So it's going to prevent it and keep it on top of the surface of the table rather than coming off the side for the whole curing process. One more swipe. Man, that looks smooth. It's not going to be perfectly level with the seal coat. That's why we do a second coat on top to final get that absolutely, absolutely 100% perfect. So I put that flood coat on. I use this V-notch trial. I'm going to wipe it off so that when I do that final flood coat after the seal coat, I can actually use it instead of the epoxy going into those V-notch trial V-notches here. So I'm just going to give it a little quick clean. Um, so when we come back to do the flood coat, it'll be ready to go. Uh, but absolutely use a clean rag, right? We don't want to leave. We don't want to use like a paper rag because if you're cleaning off your tools um, through the first uh, seal coat with like uh, a paper rag or a paper towel, you're going to leave some residual paper marks on it. So use like a terry cloth or like a t-shirt rag or something like that. That's going to not leave any residue on the tools while you're cleaning. So what I have here is I have a heat gun that I'm going to run over the table surface to kind of break some of the surface bubbles that have come out to make sure it stays flat. We want to stay just a few inches away so that we make sure not to like dip the heat gun into the epoxy as it's curing and to make sure, give us an opportunity to control the level of heat a little bit more. Now a lot of folks will use a blowtorch, which does work, but I get nervous using blowtorch because I don't want to overheat the surface. If you overheat the surface, the epoxy will scorch and then you're going to have to clear off all the old epoxy after it cures and then you're going to have to redo the surface and you don't want to do that. Um, so I use a heat gun. I've got two settings. On this one, I've got a, um, a light setting and a more powerful, turns on the blower a little bit heavier. I like the heavier setting. So I'm just going to hit, sit here. You can see some of those tiny little surface bubbles that we have um, crack and pop. Uh, again, we don't want to um, get it too close and we don't want to hold it over for too long because if you do that, you'll scorch the surface and that'll be an issue with your final product. You see them pop? Do it along the side real fast. That's it, just a quick one. And then I'll come out and take a look at it a little bit later, see how it's doing. One thing we noticed after we did the seal coat on this table was that the wood ended up not being as porous as I had originally expected. And one of the great things about this, one of the great things about Upstart Epoxy here is it is absolutely 100% level just with that 1 16th of an inch coat on top of the surface of this table. Now, originally I was planning on doing a second um, seal, uh, flood coat on top of this, but this seal coat, the way that I put it on, really has filled in all of the voids on the wood surface, all of those pockets that were holding up air, and I don't see any 
air bubbles at all on this project. I took a look closely at the edges to make sure those were coated really well, and they absolutely were. So I honestly, I'm not gonna put a second table, a second pour on this. I'm not gonna put that second flood coat on this because this particular set of wood um, was not as porous as originally expected. So we're gonna save a, a fair amount of money, save some epoxy, save some time, not gonna have to put another coat on it. Because again, with using upstart epoxy, this has become totally, totally level. There's really no surface bubbles on it. And it's really penetrated the wood and sealed the wood appropriately and well, then I'm not worried about it just having this one coat on it, which I'm really actually excited about because I get the shop back, um, ready to work on other projects just like this. One of the other things that we need to pay attention to on a table like this, we have totally and 100% sealed the top surface of this table and the sides. The thing that's missing right now is the bottom of the table. The bottom of the table right now isn't sealed at all. Uh, it's still raw wood. Once this epoxy cures, I'm going to take, flip the table upside down, put it on a really nice soft surface. I'm gonna sand any of the residual drips that might happen on the, on the bottom surface of the table. And then I'm gonna put um, tape off the edges, and then I'm gonna put a coat of polyurethane to seal the bottom side of the table. You gotta make sure to do that because the wood is gonna flex and move based off of humidity changes. So you wanna completely seal all surfaces of the table to make sure that humidity doesn't get in so that the wood can flex. Again, what we're gonna do here after everything's all said and done, after the epoxy has hardened and cured, I'm gonna flip the tabletop over. I'm gonna sand any drips that might've gotten in the way that I might've missed on the bottom of the table. Then I'm gonna tape the edges of the table to make sure that when I seal that bottom, we don't get any of that sealer on the, on the sides or the edges of the table. We're gonna seal that bottom part, make sure it's 100% perfectly sealed before we install it. Thanks for watching our video. Um, what we just did was we just poured upstart epoxy um, tabletop epoxy resin on top of this maple desk. Um, it's gonna be amazing, gonna be extraordinarily durable for what it's going to be used for with kids writing on it, uh, doing homework on it, all sorts of things. Um, if you'd like uh, to order more of our product, you can find it on Amazon or at our website at upstartepoxy.com.